Hello and welcome to Mathlete Minds once again. Today we get back to polynomials, polynomials part 3. And here we'll be discussing about the division algorithm as applied to polynomials. Now whether it is division algorithm applied in polynomials or division algorithm applied in pure numbers, the algorithm is the same for both of them. That is, dividend is equal to quotient into divisor plus the remainder. Only difference over here is instead of pure numbers, we'll be taking up a polynomials here. The divisor will also be a polynomial, dividend will also be a polynomial, and obviously the quotient and the remainder will be polynomials. So if we have fx as a polynomial which is being divided by a polynomial gx, then we can put it in this format that is dividend is equal to quotient into divisor plus the remainder. The Rx can be equal to 0, that is the remainder can definitely be equal to 0 and if it is not equal to 0, then Rx, the degree of Rx will be less than the degree of Gx. So we can continue with the division process as long as the degree of the remainder is, does not become less than the degree of the divisor. So let's take a simple example to understand this division process. Over here we have Fx which is a fourth degree polynomial and gx with the second degree polynomial. So first of all, what we need to do is arrange both the polynomials in descending order of the index or the uh, exponent of x. So here we have 30x4 as the first term, and then here we have 3x squared as the first term. So now we concentrate on the first terms of the dividend and the divisor. Now this is 3. In order to get 30 from 3, we need to simply multiply it by 10. So the coefficient of the first quotient term will be 10. x square into x square will give us x to the power of 4. So here we get 10x square. So now this 10x square will multiply all the terms over here with 10x square. So the first term will obviously be 30x4. The second term over here will be 20x cubed. The next term will be minus 40x square. Next step is We'll subtract these terms from the above term. So we, the first term gets cancelled. This becomes minus 9x cubed. This becomes, uh, this is plus over here. So this becomes minus 42x squared. And this is minus 12x plus 48. So next quotient term, this is minus 9. So obviously it will proceed with minus sign over here. And we'll get here minus 3 because 3 into 3 is 9. And another x because x squared into x will give us x cubed. So this becomes minus 9x cubed. Then the next term over here will become minus 6x squared and the next term will become plus 12x. So when we subtract, this term gets cancelled. Here we are left with minus 36x squared and this becomes minus 24x and this becomes plus 48. So the next quotient term, this is 36 and minus sign. So first we'll put the minus sign here. Now 3 into 12 is 36. So here the next term will be 12 and we get here minus 36x squared. Then minus 12 into plus 2, that gives us minus 24x. And minus 12 into minus 4, that gives us plus 48. So the terms, if we subtract, all the terms reduce to 0 and we get a remainder as 0, Rx is 0. So this quotient that we have obtained, if we multiply it by the divisor, we'll get the original fx that we were given or the original polynomial that we were given. And uh, we can say that to Qx, that is a quotient, into the divisor that is Gx, here will be equal to fx because here Rx is 0. So whether we add Rx or we do not add Rx, that, that does not be, uh, is not going to create any difference to the original solution. Now what are the applications of this division algorithm? Here we'll take the first one that is finding the zeros of a polynomial when some of its zeros are given. So here first fx is a fourth degree polynomial and two of its zeros are given 2 plus minus root 3. We need to find the other two zeros of this polynomial with the help of division algorithm. So first of all let us take these two uh, zeros alpha is equal to 2 plus root 3 and beta is equal to 2 minus root 3. Now, if we take the sum of the zeros, alpha plus beta, that will be 2 plus root 3, plus 2 minus root 3, that gives us 4. This gets cancelled and we get 4. Alpha into beta is equal to 2 plus root 3, 
into 2 minus root 3 that is equal to 4 minus 3 that is 1. So the polynomial that we can frame is x square minus sum of the zeros plus the product. So this is the polynomial that we have generated with the help of these two zeros over here. Next thing that we need to do is divide this original polynomial by this polynomial that we have generated with two of its zeros. So let's see what we get as a solution. Now this is the polynomial and we divide it by x squared minus 4x plus 1. So the first quotient term will be x to the power of 2. So we get over here x to the power of 4. Next quotient term will be minus 4x cubed. And the next quotient term over here will be plus x squared. So the first term gets cancelled. And this becomes plus, so this minus 2x cubed, this will be minus 27x squared and plus 138x will come down as it is, minus 35. So next quotient term will be minus 2x, so this becomes minus 2x cubed and then this becomes plus 8x squared and then minus 2x. So this gets cancelled. And this is minus 35x squared and this becomes plus, so this becomes plus 140x minus 35. Next quotient term will be minus 35, so this becomes minus 35x squared plus 140x minus 35. So all the terms will get cancelled, change the sign and subtract, so all the terms get cancelled, rx is 0. Now what we do next is we take this quotient that we are getting x squared minus 2x minus 35 and we can find out two more zeros with the help of this quotient by splitting it into uh, with the help of middle term uh, factorization or splitting it up into factors with the help of middle term factorization. So this becomes x squared minus 7x plus 5x minus 35. So this becomes x, x minus 7 plus 5 x minus 7. So x minus 7 is one factor and x plus 5 is the other factor. So here we get the two other zeros as plus 7 and minus 5 by equating each of these factors to 0. So we get all the four zeros with the help of this division algorithm applied over here. Next is what must be subtracted from this polynomial so that the resulting solution is exactly divisible by 4x squared plus 3x minus 2. So what we do is, first of all, divide it. After arranging the terms, we divide it. So the quotient term, the first quotient term that we'll get over here is 2x squared. So this becomes 8x4. Then this next term will get 3x cubed, 6x cubed. And the next one will be minus 4x squared. So the first term gets cancelled. This will become 8x cubed. This will become 2x squared and plus 7x minus 8. Next quotient term will be plus 2x. So this becomes 8x cubed plus 6x squared minus 4x. So the first term gets cancelled. This becomes minus 4x squared. This becomes plus 11x minus 8. Next quotient term will be minus 1. So this becomes minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 2. So the first term gets cancelled. This becomes plus. So we get here 14x and this becomes minus. So 14x minus 10. So this is the expression that is these, this uh, monomial, uh, sorry, this uh, binomial needs to be subtracted from the original expression or original uh, uh, polynomial so that it is exactly divisible by 4x squared plus 3x minus 2. Let's try to understand this with a very simple example. Supposing I divide 9 by 2. In this case, I'll get here 2, 4, 8 and the remainder is 1. So if this remainder is removed from the original number 9, we'll get 8, which is a exact multiple of 2. So the same concept has been used over here. This number, this expression is removed from the original uh, polynomial and so the polynomial that we obtain after that will be an exact multiple of this divisor 4x squared plus 3x minus 2. Moving on to the next question we have what must be added to fx so that the resulting solution is exactly divisible by this gx is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. 
So here again, we proceed with the division as usual. The first term of the quotient will be 4x squared. So we get over here 4x to the power of 4. Then we get here 8x cubed. And then we get here minus 12x squared. So the first term gets cancelled. This becomes minus 6x cubed. This becomes plus 10x squared. And plus x minus 1. Next quotient term will be minus 6x over here. So this becomes minus 6x cubed. And this will become minus 12x squared. And minus 18, plus 18x. So the first term will get cancelled. We are left over here with uh, plus 22x squared. This will become minus 17x minus 1. So again the next quotient term will be plus 22. So this becomes plus 22x squared. Then we get 22 into 2 that is 44. So my, uh, plus 44x and 22 into minus uh, this becomes minus 66 over here. So the first term gets cancelled and this becomes minus, so uh, minus 44, minus 17, that is minus 61x and this will become plus over here. So this becomes uh, minus 66, uh, minus 1, plus 66, minus 1, that is plus 65. So this is the remainder over here. Now the question says, what must be added to make it a perfectly divisible? So here, we see the sign of this remainder also, minus 61x. Now, if I have to reduce this to 0, minus 61x, that means I need to add here plus 61x, so it will become 0. Similarly, plus 65, if I have to reduce it to 0, I'll add minus 65 to it to make it 0. So, ultimately, the expression that I need to add over here to reduce the remainder to 0 is plus 61x minus 65. So this is the final solution that is the terms that need to be added here in this polynomial so that it becomes exactly divisible by this given polynomial. So that must be, uh, we must keep this in mind what is needed to be added over here so that we get a uh, polynomial which is exactly divisible by the given polynomial. Let's take another interesting question. Here we have a polynomial fx which uh, has got the uh, coefficient a for x and b is a constant which are not given to us and we need to find them out and the divisor is x square plus 1. So we'll proceed in the same way. First we'll uh, divide this polynomial and this becomes x square. So this is equal to x to the power of 4. Then the next term will be x square. So we'll like write terms one below the other. So this gets cancelled. We are left over here with x cubed. This will become plus 7x square plus ax plus b. So next term that we get is plus x and this becomes x cubed plus x. So like terms again one below the other. So this gets cancelled. We are left here with 7x squared. This becomes minus. So plus ax minus x plus b. Next quotient term will be plus 7. So we get away here plus 7x squared and this becomes plus 7. So Again, 7x squared gets cancelled, so we are left with ax minus x plus b minus 7. Now, from these two terms, we can take out x common, so we are left with a minus 1 plus b minus 7. So, if we have to get uh, no remainder away because it is divisible by x squared plus 1, that means the uh, remainder is equal to 0. So, this must be understood very carefully. It is divisible. That means there is no remainder. So that means x into a minus 1 is equal to 0. So if x, this term has to be 0, then a has to be equal to 1. Because the moment you put 1 over here, this becomes 1 minus 1, that is 0. 0 into something is 0, so a has to be 1 to reduce this part of the expression to 0. Similarly, if b minus 7 has to be equal to 0, then b is equal to 7. So if we put 7 over here, this will reduce to 0. So the values of a are 1 and 7 in order that this uh, expression, this polynomial is completely divisible by the polynomial x squared plus 1. With that, we come to the end of this video. Hope you like the explanation. Kindly like and subscribe to my channel. In the next video, I'll continue with graphical representation of polynomials. Now, another thing I would like to tell you, maybe for this present session, this particular part that is division algorithm and graphical representation are not there, 
but still i am discussing i'll be taking up these two topics sub topics as they are very interesting and if you understand them polynomials will become quite easy quite easier to understand in your later on years thank you for watching kindly like and subscribe to my channel